Welcome to LRTV in tonight's edition of Legends 15. Our guest tonight has quite literally got last wade coursing through his veins. He joined the club as a wee fella, playing his mini rugby year and all the way through the age groups, and eventually in 1978 he got his call up for the first 15 at the ripe old age of 15. He's, played f he's been captain of the first 15 for three seasons and he's played over four decades playing his last game in 2007. He's now our club president, a massive driving force and ambassador for Last Week Rugby Club, so it's no prizes for guessing who tonight's guest is on Legends 15. Ibar, great to have you with us tonight on Legends 15. Um, as club president, you've seen a lot of changes in the club in recent years, much of which you've been at the centre of. Um, what does the last decade of last week um, epitomise for you? Oh, Scott, I think the, the last decade, as you say, uh, the changes that have uh, sort of ar arisen, if you like, uh, the, the new development has, has kicked off a, a new era for last week, really. Um, I think we've always been a great club. I've been associated for a, a long time. Uh, I remember playing down in, in Bonnerig Park when I first started playing, and uh, we, we got tomato soup in the morning in the wee the wee pavilion, which I think is now a nursery. And the the guys, uh, the, the old committee, of Joe Whittaker, Tommy Gray, Bob Knowles, that era, were uh, were busy developing this place for us to come to. And uh, you know that in itself, way back in 1974, was really uh, I think put us to the potentially the forefront of Scottish rugby at the time, having our own facilities. And I think we got to the stage um, just a few years back, 10 years ago or so, that uh, we needed to do something again. And I, I, th I think we were, we were almost reborn again. Um, and we, I think, maybe embraced the the game of rugby a wee bit better this time. We, we put in a proper coaching structure, uh, which attracted a few players, your, your brother being the first sort of Note, player of note, if you like, to come along. So, yeah, it, it moved us on leaps and bounds, and uh, the last decade, I think, has been yeah, unforgettable for most people. Some fantastic successes, and uh, long may it continue. Well, we had George Anderson on the show the last time, and he was basically saying, in, in his 70-year association with Last Wade, that his golden era hasn't not necessarily been the time he played here, but more has more more um, more uh, definedly been the last five years in the club. It's been a fantastic time. He's enjoyed it the most. I, I think I, w I would agree with them. I mean, we all love the time when we were playing. You know, you know when we were in our prime, if you like, playing for uh, last week's first fifteen. Uh, th these were, you know, you were never more proud, if you like, to, to be a servant of the club. Um, but, but yeah, moving along from that, I, I, I must admit I've had a great deal of personal satisfaction uh, from the success on the field, and you know. We spoke about Dave Coburn uh, leaving us uh, after his five years here. I mean, who'd have thought five, six years ago that last week we're going to win promotion three years in the trot? Yeah, be in the mix of where we are now. It, exactly, and, and go to Murrayfield and uh, do what no club had ever done before, yeah. win that National Shield and go back the following year and win it again. So the success that that's brought the club, uh, absolutely fantastic. So I, I fully agree with George that the last... Uh, five years have uh, sort of eclipsed my playing career, if you like, um, and I just hope that we can sort of tie into that. The journey continues, hopefully. Yeah, exactly, and, and let's try and keep it going. It will be difficult. Yeah. Um, it, it's always hard when you get to sort of pinnacles of, of your career, whether it's playing or coaching or, or, or just being now on the committee of the club and giving something back. But it's, uh, yeah, I think we've got to try and, and, and try and keep a hold of that. Good. Ian, just... Uh, Quite interesting looking at your team here. Um, we've, uh, when you when you summarise it, we've got um, inclusion of one from the 60s and 70s, one from the 70s and 80s, nine from the 90s and, and 80s, which incidentally, uh, George had none at all from the 90s last weekend, but, you know, it's everybody to their own and everybody's interpretation of, of uh, who fitted and where. And we've got four from the sort of current era in the 2000s. I'm uh, quite intrigued to know if you had any complimentary text messages um, from either Alan Bain, Alan Wallace or Kevin Gregg in the last week just... Trying to, trying to raise the game to see if they get a bit of inclusion. Well, absolutely not. I mean, uh, I didn't mention it to any of them because they would all, I would have been inundated with people <laughs> thinking they, that they should have been in there. But, the but uh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, George, to, to be fair, I watched George's team last week and I, I think you'll find this very interesting going forward. I don't think you will ever get the same team from different people. Our, our views all differ. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if George actually followed us as much 
in the 90s. I think he was still busy with his Edinburgh Referees Society. Well, clearly, and clearly. <laughs> uh, obviously, yeah, I would like to say that. But, um, you know, I, I think more from that era, that was the time that I played. Um, and that was the time that uh, I think we all know what our teammates are like. Uh, I played through a long time, as you said, three decades almost as well. So I saw a lot of players coming and going. And, you know, there's some yeah. of these guys in there would fit in today, definitely. Uh, well, well, let's have a look at them. I mean, in, in the, in the coal face, we'll go with the, the props. Um, you've got uh, another appearance two weeks in the trot for Peter Wright. I, I, you can't go past Peter Wright. I know Peter's playing career here was, uh, was pretty short, but uh, Peter always showed that uh, he was going to, he was made for better things you know you could see that the boy was uh, he was designed to be a prop uh, and i mean that in the best possible respect a big strong lad um, at a very young age and very good ball skills and very mobile about the park now uh, I, I know people could be scathing and say when they watch them on uh, the, the international arena sometimes he was built like a prop they're not the fastest guys but i'll tell you you go on a rugby field and try and catch him when he was in his prime. Um, well, he played by a row. He played by a row through the age group, didn't he? Uh, indeed. He, yeah. uh, like the, well, the three brothers did. You know, yeah. it was quite strange. The three brothers were here um, and they, they were all very fast. I but they expanded into other positions. In, indeed. And, uh, as we all do. We, we certainly do as we get older. But no, I think Peter, uh, having gone on uh, to last week's only full international and British Lion, I think it would be uh, it would be a travesty if I didn't have Peter. It would be an injustice. Indeed. Yep. indeed. Okay. At Hooker, we've got a player from the 80s and 90s, none other than Andy Syme. Yeah, again, somebody from, from my own era. And uh, I, mean, I mean, Andy was one of these guys, and I think you played with him at the same time, Scott. He was a, uh, a larger-than-life character. Uh, he had a good set of hands on him. He was one of these guys that uh, if you had a tap penalty or a short penalty 10, 10 metres out, guaranteed Andy Syme was going to barge his way over there. Um, his line out throwing sometimes wasn't the best but uh, I think all round in the modern game Andy Syme had the strength he had the speed he was a bit injury prone but uh, when he was fully fit uh, he was uh, you can't run through walls or not have the occasional injury uh, indeed and uh, I, th I think he was uh, a prime example of somebody that did put his body on the line but uh, no, definitely a big, a big physical guy OK, completing the, the compliment in the front row and the cool face, we've got uh, a player from the 80s and 90s as well, none other than Alec Ross. Indeed, Alec, um, Alec came to us as, uh, and quite a slight character as well, I have to say, when he first came along. Alec, I know he's, uh, like the rest of us, larger than life. As he got older, he did get a wee bit bigger. But for somebody of Alec's size to be as physically strong uh, as that lad, uh, unbelievable and... You know, it, it's quite hard trying to pick props for the front row. I think we, we mentioned earlier on there's, there's people like Billy Knowles, there's Psycho, the lad Quigley who's pictured behind us. Um, we've had a lot of good props at this club over the years. Um, Nicol Hamilton being another one. You know, strong props, props that aren't quite as strong that can run around. But in Alec Ross, we got a prop who was as strong as an ox. He could take that scrum up, down, inside out. It didn't matter to him. And yet, every kickoff, Alec Ross was the first man up, three, four, five feet in the air, catching the ball, and he could run like a back row forward. He could get her in the park, couldn't he? He was an all-rounder. He uh, certainly was, and, uh, you know, I, again, I think uh, he would have been fantastic in the modern game, so... Yeah. That's a pretty formidable thing, though, actually, when you see it. There's a lot of weight there, a lot of ruggedness and a lot of ball skills. Definitely. Um, I, I think it would give the, the boys today something to, <laughs> something to think about anyway. <laughs> OK, moving into the boiler house. Uh, second row pairing, it has to be said, um, that I would uh, I'd love to see on the pitch, but it would obviously physically never happen. Uh, first of all, we'll go to the, a man who's made it two weeks in a row again is uh, none other than a man from the 50s, 60s and 70s, Bob Knowles himself. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I didn't have uh, the pleasure of playing with, with Bob Knowles in the first 15, but uh, I think... Having watched Bob play in as a youngster, uh, having played with him uh, at that time, I think when I, as I say, I, I was lucky enough to get uh, that first game that I got was just on a call off. It was a Dalkey Shield game and I was playing. I'm not sure if Bob was actually playing that day, but the people like George Scott, uh, Walter Verchiniak, uh, Don Ross, uh, I think Davy Porteous was one of the props, and maybe even Jimmy Cowie. Um, but Bob Knowles at that time, great in the line out. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to play with him in last week twos and threes and fours 
Um, Bob by that stage had uh, put his body on the line. Had you seen the best of him by then? Uh, well, uh, he, he was all bandaged together. He was kind of <laughs> like uh, it was like something someone out the mummy's tomb occasionally. <laughs> but uh, he put in a, a, an awful shift. He was all knees and elbows, and he was a he was a hard man, very good rugby player. Um, so. You know, a, a legend at last Wade. So yeah. I, again, you know, he, he was in, he was penciled in straight away. Backing down next to him, we've got our very own Colin Pow. Definitely, um, Colin uh, started off his career at last Wade, and, and I think between Ross High and Musselburgh, they probably got the best of uh, of Colin's years. He came back to us as a very accomplished player, um, a, a very good back row player. And I think uh, Colin played in, in his prime. He would probably be a number eight. But uh, when he came back here and uh, played in the boiler house, he added an extra dimension to the game. Again, somebody that was good in the line out, somebody that was very good in the loose, and a, a big hard tackler. You know? He's like H beams everywhere, isn't he? Definitely. You know, he, he was one of these guys that if there was a ruck or a mall, Colin would be in there getting a hand on the ball and ripping it out. If it was on the deck, he'd be in there, body on the line, making sure he was getting it there. Um, and he wasn't af afraid to mix it either, you know. So no, he's all corners, elbows and high knees. Definitely. I mean, you, you've got two second rows there that uh, in their prime would be very, very hard to get the ball from and very hard to bring down. So yeah, Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. OK, you know, moving into the back row, and we discussed earlier, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a multitude of names, or not a multitude, but maybe five or six guys in the mix for this for the three jerseys at hand um taking on the number six jerseys our captain this year gav brown yeah definitely i mean gavin came to this club uh with a wealth of experience i mean he's, he's a very a very accomplished player gav and uh you know i, I couldn't go past him there's guys that have played um i played at number six myself i know richard borthwick uh, likes to play number six um i think i mentioned a few guys to earlier on murray clark was a very good player um, Herbie Gladstone, Davy Oliver, you know, go back through the years. Um, Bob Donaldson, some great back, back yeah. row players. But I think Gavin, just all round, a very polished player, knows the game inside out. So, yeah, for me, a, a blind side. Just, I mean, you talked about earlier about somebody else having the best of Colin Power. I think maybe Watsonian's got the best of Gav, but there's still a bit tougher when he came to last week. I'll be quite honest, when Gav came to last week, he still he had a great deal to offer, and uh, I know he's maybe not playing sevens this year as, <laughs> as seriously as he was in the last uh, few years, but no, still a, a very good servant for, for last week, and uh, no, I think he deserves, deserves to be in there. Good. A man who I respect myself playing at number seven um, when I played with him in the early 90s, in the 80s and 90s, none other than David Wright. Yeah, definitely. Davey, uh, we, we used to talk about Peter being uh, the, the right brother, yeah. if you like, that went on to, to greater things. But uh, I think Davey probably, and I don't think the other, the Graham or Peter would mind me saying that Davey probably had the best skills, um, or potentially the best skills. And when Davey Wright was on form, whether he was at number eight or whether he was at open side, um, he, he, he was like poetry in motion. You know, he, he wasn't a grunter. Um, you, you know, you got a combination there of, of Gavin, who'll do the, the hard graft and, and put the hits in and, and secure the ball. Uh, and and Davy, for all Davy could still do all that. Uh, Davy was a man that would, would be quite creative. He yeah. could he could make gaps and amazing vision. Actually, a good all round footballer, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you you hit the nail on the head there. Davy actually came to us ironically after playing football to oh, start right. with okay. um, and got quite a bad uh, leg break. And uh, when he got himself uh, back to full fitness, he decided he didn't want to play that. He would come to play rugby. And uh, I do remember sitting in Paisley Royal Infirmary <laughs> a few years down the line. I think we were at Garnock when Davy unfortunately broke his leg <laughs> playing rugby as well. So, uh, but no, you're, you're right. A good footballer, um, obviously a good all-round sportsman. And uh, I think he used that uh, knowledge to the best of his uh, he was one of these guys that he could create something out of nothing, you know. And uh, but he again, he was a he was a hard lad, yeah. um, a very good set of hands. So. Okay, um, moving in with the number eight jersey, a player from the eighties and nineties, uh, aka Chocolate, better known as Stevie Dick. Indeed, um, yeah, I don't I don't think you'll mind us calling him Chocolate. We always do, <laughs> uh, but but Stevie, um, to me, was the epitome. Of, what a number eight should be, uh, and again we've had so many good number eights. I know uh, Mr. Bain will probably think that that he should be in the mix for being number eight. Uh, and I think he'll remind you of it afterwards. He probably, he probably will do, but um, none, nonetheless, um, going back through some of these guys, Brian McRoberts was a was a fantastic number eight for the club. But Stevie Dick and the years that Stevie played, um, number eight pickups, ten, fifteen metres out. Stop him. Unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, the guy was going to do that. He, in his prime, uh, it, it was ridiculous at one stage when we came up through the, the regional league that, uh, or, or 
probably Division 7 at the time, Stevie Dick was scoring four or five tries a game. You know, now, if that happened nowadays, the man... He wouldn't be at the club long, would he? He wouldn't be at the club long. You know, you'd be right up playing at the top level and, and Stevie could have gone on to, to greater things. So, you know, again, somebody who was big, strong, eh, he was he was belligerent, you know, he, he would run through people, but he had a great vision as well. He always knew when to pick up, he knew when to keep the ball in. So. Yeah, I always felt he had a real presence on the pitch, you know, he, he, he looked like an eight, he looked like somebody imposing and he would have you in the back foot mentally if nothing else. In, indeed, yeah, and, and a, a bit similar to, to Davy Wright, the, the vision thing, Stevie was a very accomplished football player as well, he'd played football before he came to rugby, he was a late starter, he didn't start playing uh, rugby until his mid-twenties. He'd never played with a rugby ball uh, until then. Well, he certainly made up for lost time. He, he certainly did. Uh, I mean, we started off with, with Stevie in the second row uh, until he learnt the game, but it very quickly became apparent that uh, he, 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 he was wasted in there. You know, <laughs> let's get that guy out and let's get him running around with the ball. And, uh, yep, and went on to be a very good captain as well. So. Excellent. Ian, moving into the half-backs, we've got two guys who've made it two weeks in the trot. Uh, pulling on the number nine, nine jerseys, our current scrum half of the club, uh, Neil Clark, better known as Clarkey. Yeah, I, Again, it's it, it's easy to look at the team at present uh, because, because they're they're here, they're, they're they're fresh in the mind, if you like. But but looking back and thinking back I, again, we've had lots of good scrum halves over the years. People like Alan Wallace, you mentioned earlier on, uh, Rab Welsh, Gordon Aitchison, um Les Meldrum in his day w was a good scrum half. We, we have had a lot of good lads uh, there. Dougie Morrison being another one, but. Really, when Neil Clark came here, you could just see that he was uh, a, a different level altogether. You know, somebody that's played for, I think he played for Edinburgh, he played for Scotland Sevens. Uh, that was pretty obvious when you see the way he passes the ball. And, uh, you know, Neil Clark in full flight is, is still a sight to behold, I have to say. Um, if, any, yeah. if anybody's going to create something out of nothing, it's, it's Clarkey with the, the vision that he's... Well, you just said Stevie Dick's obviously hard stuff over 10 metres from the try line. Clarkey, and again, in the nine years, is pretty similar. Indeed, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you don't think he's that big uh, a presence when you see him there for a scrum half in the modern game. You he know. moves his feet so well in the contact and, and off uh, wrong foots people. He, he certainly does. I mean, he's got very quick feet and, and obviously as a fighter pilot, he sees gaps that nobody else sees. <laughs> um, Fortunately at times. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but uh, no, I, I think uh, Neil Clark definitely for me, uh, absolutely fantastic okay. scrum half. Pulling on the 10 jersey, I don't think it would have been out of the way actually to have handed this guy the jersey and say, take that with you and when we find somebody better, we'll give you a call. And I think he'd still be holding on to it yet. Yeah, I, I think so. There's sometimes, you know, you, I think I think your club or your team are honoured uh, by the presence of somebody that, uh, that that comes along and wants to play. And when we got Andrew Reid coming along, it was just uh, he helped to move this club forward leaps and bounds. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just a shame sometimes, you know, we're talking about a legends team. If you could have had collectively all these guys playing at the one yeah. time. Uh, it would be absolutely brilliant. But well, none of them would be here and they'd all be playing district rugby. <laughs> well, exactly. But, um, you know, it was quite interesting. Uh, George Anderson, who uh, was on a couple of weeks ago, I remember Rusty's first game was through at Mar, And uh, he'd, he'd just come off the plane that week. He trained on the Thursday. He went through to Mar as a substitute. And he came on in the second half. I think they, they took 50 or 60 points from Mar, And uh, George came back and... Classic, he, he, and it's one of my favourite quotes. I think it's on the website when it, you know we're all doing a wee thing about favourite quotes. And George said, uh, "Oh, absolutely fantastic day, great game, lovely to watch Bernie Hennessy and all these guys in full flight." Well, I'm not sure about your new standoff. I'm not quite made up my mind yet. <laughs> um, and I, I do remind George of that. Uh, well, it's good to see he's vindicated. But de definitely, but uh, I mean, number tens. I've always said real standoffs are, are born. You, they're not created, you know, you, you're born into that role and New Zealand just seem to keep churning them out but... Uh, I said this the last time, he gave everybody round about him just so much more time on the ball He certainly did and uh, I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves, I don't think he was even playing at 100% when he was here he was here for the, the fun and the enjoyment yeah. uh, I'm not saying he didn't dig in for the guys when he had to, mm -hmm. he, uh, he put in a shift to do that, yeah. but you could always tell that uh, he had another gear left, if required. Um, well, there, was more, there was more gas left in the tank. There certainly was. And one thing about him, you know, it's... Um, I remember the first game he played here, that would be the week after uh, the, the Mar game. He was up in the top left-hand corner, the top of uh, the corner in front of the stand, and uh, the ball came out to him, and he put his foot to it, and it, I think we had a line-out, or they had a line-out on the, the five-metre line, kicked it diagonally from one side of the pitch to the other with his right foot. Um, and 
I can't quite remember who it was we were playing. And the, you could see the wing forward looking at him, thinking, right, I'll force him onto the other side the next time. Well, he did the same with the other foot from the other <laughs> corner. So, you know, he could kick off both feet. The, the, the speed on the guy when he, when he made the break, you know, he was a very clever player. It was, he mixed his yeah. game so yeah. well. But, yeah. And he didn't even look as if he was moving fast. No, he, he looked as if he was totally in an armchair, just yeah. taking it easy. Definitely. And uh, we've had so many potential, really good, potentially really good standoffs over the years, but they just don't manage to create yeah. that space for themselves. But uh, somebody like Andrew Reid, unbelievable. Yeah. OK, uh, pulling on the jersey for the left wing, uh, we've got a player from the 90s, Mark Smith. Yeah, and Mark probably surprised a few people. We had a lot of out-and-out Finishers, you know, we had people who were very fast on that left wing. Willie Carmichael was very fast. Um, Chris Elliott, another guy from the yeah. sort of 90s, was very, very fast. Um, but I think from the all round aspect of it, and, and I'm not sure if Mark Smith is really a winger, but we weren't sure if he was a scrum half. Well, he finished on by road, didn't he? He, he did. Mark was again, uh, he was a ball player, he was a rugby player, he had good vision, he tackled well. And he was a great finisher. And I, I think the last season that Mark Smith played on the wing, he was a bit like Stevie Dick. He scored tries for fun. We just got the ball to Mark and he would create space out of nothing. He was very quick off the mark. You could have static ball and, uh, you know, he could get from, from not to 60, as they say, in very few seconds. Yeah. So uh, for the points that he scored, for the shifts that he put in all round, I would say Mark Smith. He, he, he cuts the grade. He makes the cut. OK, Ian, um, on the 12th jersey, we've got a man who's made it two weeks in a row as well. Our very own, uh, our favourite Springbok at last week, none other than Bernie Hennessy. Yeah, I, again, you know, I've gone back over the years and we, we've had all sorts of different players. I remember Don Ross, who was kind of like a Rolls Royce of an inside centre, who was uh, could create space, create gaps. Guys like Walter Virchiniak or Vav. Uh, as, as the guys knew him because most of them couldn't pronounce his name and apologies if I haven't either, Vav. <laughs> um, you know, a big, strong crash ball centre. We had John Curry um, a few years ago. Um, you know, we've had a lot of good centres. James Elliott puts in a, a cracking shift at centre. But Bernie Hennessy, uh, when he came to the club, you could just see that the guy was oozing class. Um, he moved the guys round about him up a yeah. different level. And he when did. you had him outside, Andrew Reid... It was just a joy to, to behold. And, you know, Bernie was one of these guys, every time he gets the ball, guaranteed he's making yards. That step that is outrageous, uh, he still tries to do it now, but uh, just a wee bit slower, maybe a gear or two down the way. But when he first came here, that step and go, uh, just the, the power that the man had. And he's, he's a bit of a chameleon. He reinvents himself whenever he needs to. I mean, he was what, Watsonians, he was 10, sometimes 12, went to Richmond, back row, came to back to Watsonians again for a while. And uh, obviously into last week, he's been at, he's been at uh, 10, 12, 8, 6 and, and 4 and 5, I think, this season. Yeah, I, I think so. He's, he's like uh, when we all used to play football at school, you start off at centre forward, he'll end up being the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper. <laughs> sure, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, Bernie still, yeah, the, the, and the experience he's got. And, and guys, I remember Bernie's first year, Martin Armstrong scored so many tries from Bernie Hennessy. Martin just loved playing beside him. Right, um, sure. Kyle yeah. Smith is the same. You know, it's great to see Bernie making all the gaps, uh, you know, he doesn't like to run the length of the pitch anymore, but young Kyle uh, on his shoulder, bang, he's away. Um, so, yeah, for the vision and the... Well, he's a, he's, a couple of, he's a couple of yards of pace lighter than when he was when he first came here, but the hits that he puts in are just every bit as big as they used to be. Oh, definitely, and that's, that's the thing about Bernie, you know, it, it's not just about making breaks and, uh, and putting other guys in, he, he, does, he puts in a shift every time he pulls on that jersey. Um, the, the hits, as you say, they go in, the winning ball on the deck, he's so good at uh, you know, quick decisions, going into rucks and malls, knowing when to take the ball, knowing when to leave the ball alone. Um, but the skills of the man too, every now and again when Mr Clark threw, throws a dodgy pass or when somebody inside throws a dodgy pass, he can pick them up from his bootlaces. You know, he's guy, Mr Go-Forward, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. He's, he's just got rugby uh, coming out his pores. So, uh, yeah. And uh, well, pairing up next to him in the 13 jersey is a man who played in my era, uh, probably one of the silkiest runners I've ever seen with a rugby ball in his hand. A man from the 80s and the 90s, none other than Roger Jackman. Yeah, I, again, fantastic player, Roger. And, and probably in Roger's prime, uh, had he had people like Neil Clark and Andrew Reid inside throwing ball out to him, he would just have been a try-scoring machine. Yeah. Um, I, I think at that time we didn't have a proper structure, we didn't have a, uh, a proper coach, etc. But Roger Jackman just 
an eye for a gap and the acceleration of the guy um, and, and the fitness of him. I mean, he would accelerate from inside his own 22 and he's still running at full speed when he's crossing the line at the other, the other end of the pitch. Um, You've heard folk talking about Will Greenwood. He's a ghosting runner. He just, he just, you know, meanders through players like they're standing still. That's what I feel Roger Jackman was like when he played. Definitely. I, I think Roger, every time, you know, and, um, and probably didn't get as much ball at that time. We were probably a, more a forwards orientated side. But uh, if if you get the ball to Roger Jackman in a wee bit of space, uh, you know, it was it was try time. Try time. Definitely. Well, pairing up next to him in the right wing is uh, a player from the 70s, 80s and the 90s, a bit like yourself, a man for all seasons and all decades. Uh, a bit of a wrecking ball, and, and a, I, might, I might say so as well, for a 14, none other than Sandy Roy. Indeed, yeah, and I know uh, your memories of Sandy and some of the, the, the sort of guys of, of, of my age of Sandy were, was a big, a unit. strong yeah. unit of a winger. But uh, when I first came to the club, Sandy was actually built like... Uh, Kyle Smith or uh, <laughs> Niall Gray, uh, and very, very quick, uh, great vision, and uh, yeah, a, a try scoring machine as well. Just what you want on your wing. You know, it was one of these ones you get the ball to Sandy Roy, he'll score you a try. And as Sandy got older, and like the rest of us, we've, talk, we've spoken about this before, you know, Sandy wouldn't have been out of place coming into the, the back row or, or coming into the forward. Well, I think he had, wee, he had a wee trip at, at prop for a while, didn't uh, he? He probably did yeah. in, his, in his twilight years, yeah. but, uh, but Sandy Roy, even carrying uh, a wee bit more, uh, he'll not mind me saying that, but carrying a wee bit more ballast, if you like, was a try-scoring machine too. Unstoppable. If you get the ball to Sandy in the, the 22, he was going to run right over the top of his man. Never shirked a tackle. Um, always liked to track back. Um, as, I, as I remember him, he was a bit of a twinkle toes. He used to move his feet really well, and they're going into contact. He, he did move his feet very well, and uh, you know, I, I think in his early days, um, Sandy was probably potentially he'd, he'd have been the same in the modern game. He'd have been taken away. He was a big, strong, really, really fast winger. Um, he wouldn't have been at last week long. You know, he'd been snapped up. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, pulling on the uh, the fullback jersey uh, as a strike runner and a man with probably the biggest boot I've ever played along with. Um, Potentially, a man from the 90s, uh, better known as Stevie Smith. Yeah, I, again, looking back over the years, you know, we, we spoke about good fullbacks. I remember Cliffy Stewart, um, as I was sort of coming into senior rugby, Cliffy was going out, very, very accomplished player. Um, John Heron, who we spoke about earlier on, uh, who used to work uh, for your dad, coincidentally, yeah. um, very strong player. Um, Nick Barrows played there, Colin Brown played there. Neil Murray um, has been a good fullback for us. Uh, Carol McWilliam is probably one of the best mm -hmm. fullbacks that we have had, but Carol played very occasionally for us at fullback. But uh, when he played, he was an absolute superstar, I have to say. But over the piece, I think uh, Stevie Smith played for nearly 10 years, or maybe slightly more than that, in the first 15. Not always at fullback, he played at standoff. Stevie was a ball player too. As you say, the boot he had on him was unbelievable but you know as a back row forward you always wanted to be able to trust your scrum half eh, sorry your, your your full back you know you knew that if somebody kicked in behind or if somebody broke through that your full back one he was going to tackle them or two he was going to yeah. catch the ball field the ball safely and, and get it back down the park and that was one thing about Stevie Smith um, so many times We've been up against it up front and phase after phase and you gradually get shoved back to your own 22 and then lo and behold, bang, a quick turnover and their forwards get their heads up. They've had 10 phases of possession and they lift their heads from the ruck <laughs> and they've got a line out on their own line and they're thinking, what, what? happened there? You know, that uh, just boom from it, it just, it does. And, you know, that, that wins games. Yeah. And uh, that guy could win games with his defence, but his offence as well. He's running lines, um, big strong runner, very, very fast. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a joy to have Stevie at fullback. You, you felt safe. Well, in reflection, Ian, looking at your team, I think there's, there's been plenty of pints on the bar from the boys in the 90s. There's a pat on the back from Bob Knowles in the 70s. And I think your phone's going to be ringing off the hook when the boys in the, t in the noughties, we've not made, it, made the cut or made it into the side. But hey, this is what this is all about. It's all about inspiring a bit of debate. Everybody's got a different take on what their legends, on what their own sort of legendary last week 15 will be. And no doubt yours will be no different to George. I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, we, we spoke briefly about that earlier on. You know, people will have their own views and their own opinions. I don't think you'll get two identical teams. I, I would like to think there will be a lot of people will be in 
you know, as you said already, you've got Bernie Hennessy, you've got Neil Clark, Andrew Reid, uh, Peter Wright, you've got guys like that that will probably feature in most people's yeah. opinion as being up there. But hey ho, there were. We have been fortunate. We've had a lot of good players over the years. Um, but fortunately, we've managed to keep them as well. Well, yeah, we, we have, and uh, I think now that the club's in a better position. Um, uh, League-wise, we, we should keep a hold of our players a wee bit longer now than we used to, po possibly. Um, but, you know, it's it's great looking back on these legends of the past, but it, it was great being in the changing room the other night, having a wee meeting with the players. Um, I, I know that uh, some of the older guys are stepping down, but looking around that room, to me it was like being back at school. They were all kids. And that's the future of the club. Absolutely fantastic, you know. There's a lot There's a lot of talent, isn't there, coming through the, the younger age groups? Definitely a lot of talent yeah. coming through. And, uh, you know, let's hope that these guys can can have a look at us old uh, old doofers, if you like, speaking about uh, the, the the bygone days, if you like. But Well, let's hope in five years' time, if we're doing this again, we're sitting in, the, in this room and, and we're talking about some of these guys on the sheet. Exactly, yeah, definitely, Scott. I, I think... Uh, they have to look to that and say, yeah, I want to get into that. You know, not just get into last week first 15, but get, get into the Legends <laughs> team as well. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think potentially there's a lot of young guys Great. to do that. So. Ian, thanks very much. I really appreciate you doing this. It's been brilliant. I um, hope you've enjoyed it as well. Um, tune in next time. We'll see which, uh, which Legends going to be joining us on Legends 15. But from LRTV, it's good night from us and bye for now.